Hello guys, it's Craig Vi here, and I'm here with the other Craig, Mr. Craig Mitch. It's another team Craig Your bringing it. Craig Perry. Mm, you know ever. it, you know it, you know it. And we are here today to talk about the top 10 summer signings oh, yeah, summer. of all time in the Premier League era. They are the stipulations. Can you do it? I can. And remember, he said summer. Before some of you go, oh, but even yeah. what about so and so? No, where's um, the phone? Exactly, and we're talking nah. about the first time that we sign people as well. So, like, yeah. not when we re-sign people. If we re-sign them in the summer when we originally signed them in Don't the January, count. doesn't count. There's Does the not stipulations. Count. Yeah, these are the stipulations. They're the caveats. Get it right. It'll be Craig in the Mitch. description as well, just in case you need extra reassurance. Anyway. Yeah, we've got rules and regulations here, and we like to stick by them. Mm -hmm. Straight off the bat, let's kick it off with number 10 in the all-time summer signings. Who is it? I want to know. Eric Dyer. Well, this was a little bit of a contentious issue, wasn't yeah, it, amongst no. us here? Give us, give us the background on, on Eric Dyer. Signing from Sporting Lisbon. Signing from Sporting Lisbon. Four million pounds, was it, we picked him up for? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, four million pounds on the 2nd of August in 2014. Ooh, I mean, I think the reason He's so high up the list is because he hasn't been there for that long. Yeah. And arguably last season was his only great season. His first season, he, he Yeah, he know, showed he promise in the first season, yeah. didn't he? But he made a few mistakes. He was playing at centre back. back. Exactly. He wasn't playing in cent central midfield. Mm. Um, I mean, he scored that great goal on his debut. Yeah. But then the second season, whoa. I mean, just like, no, just no one saw it coming. No one. And all of a sudden, he's in contention to be well, England Poch captain. Poch well, Poch, of course, masterminded Poch, that. Yeah, but Poch, is, Poch isn't in anyone. The Poch is not anyone. Yeah. Hey, he's a superhuman. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a god. Yeah, he's he's, like to put it. Yeah. yeah, but so Eric Dyer, he's in at number ten, and I, I look, he, he could be, I say, he could even be higher up the list. But <laughs> you wait till you hear the oh, other this players. This list is just oh. phenomenal. I mean, I don't mean to toot our own horns, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird. Don't do that, that again. So I won't do that again. <laughs> I won't do that again. <laughs> this list is pretty special. It is. We're rating ourselves. Let's go with number mm. nine. Number nine. Okay, straight in at number nine. Well, you got the list. Here we go. Oh, and again, it's another, it's another cracker. And he, again, he could be higher up the list. Yeah. The great Dane himself. Oh, yeah. Mr. Christian Eriksson. Talk Mate, to me. I wanted him a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. I wanted him a little bit higher. Yeah. There was a debate about him and the next person that's coming up. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think it is fair to say maybe he's ninth. Yeah. But if we're talking about potential, how much we got him for, True. how much did potential. we get him for again? Well, 12.5 million, some sources say 11.5, other sources say 12.5 million, on the 30th of August 2013 from, from Ajax. Ajax. Yes, Ajax. I mean, uh, honestly, the potential he has, the ability he has, he could go places. Well, I'm, I'm scared we might not even keep him in the future when he gets a little bit older. I could see him playing for like a Barcelona exactly. or Real Madrid easily. Yeah, I mean, he's, never, been, he's been playing Champions League since he was like 16. Just the other day, they were talking about his contract extension. He hasn't signed it yet. You know, mm. oh, you know, we need to tie him down again. Apparently, yep. he wants parity with some of the other pl the players who are paid the highest in the club. Yeah. In some ways, you're like, well, you've got to pay him the money. Give you've got to keep it. hold of this give kid, him right? It. Yeah. I mean, that I was, he was talked it. about for years as well. I remember it was like two or three years we were we were like talking about signing this player, and everyone was talking about what a great player he was. He was already like one of the. Was he banging him in for Denmark yeah. and already like played at wonder kid? Number of games. He was a wonder kid. He, he was, was a wonder, wonder kid. kid football manager. Yeah, and and I think the reason he's not higher up, <laughs> football manager, the reason he's not higher up on the list uh, is because he does have those periods, doesn't he, where he's in and out. Yeah. Fair to I mean, say? Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, I feel like he's a bit unsung in some aspects. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, created a lot of chances last season. But I'd say number nine is number fair. Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, move on. All right, number eight, number eight is the none other than Toby Alderweireld. Yeah, now, this funny. is the person we was debating with Christian Eriksen about who should be higher up. But I mean, Toby Alderweireld literally transformed our defence last season. He did, yeah, he did. And I think that this, this was my argument when we were discussing it. That yep. The Spurs defence last season was so unrecognisable from any other Spurs defence that I can remember. I mean, we had the me okay, along with Man United, we had the meanest defence in the Premier League, but really that was skewed anyway because of the last four games, and particularly the game against Newcastle uh, at the end of the season. <laughs> Sorry, um, and so it's Juventus, mate. I put that down to I put that down to Toby. Yeah, I mean, look. Jan came in, Jan's been amazing for us, but really, truthfully, took us Jan, to the next level out of world. Rose and Walker were playing together before Toby yeah. came in. He did he just took he took it to another level. He did, he did. Arguably he made uh Carl Walker play better at right yeah. back as well, made him feel much more comfortable over there. I, I just he's been he's been a revelation. Best, it was central, best central defender in the Premier League last season? Oh, 100%, 100%. Is he the best overall? Oh, I don't know. There's a little yeah. Vincent Company maybe to look at, but yeah. 
He's up there. He's yeah. up there, and he definitely deserves number eight on the list. Um, how much did we sign him from? Uh, Let's we signed. Good. We signed him for. Uh, it doesn't say on my card. I don't know. I think we. I think we signed him for about eight million pounds. Around about. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. 12 million pounds. 12 million. Oh, Our sources out. just get... Million? What was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Coming yeah. in on the line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes mm-hmm. you leave it out. That's yeah, right. 4 million out. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and we, we signed him from a, uh, Atletico. Atletico. Yep. He was playing for Southampton, of course. But they wanted him, him but there. not good enough, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yes. Potch is stepping stone. Yeah. I don't think so. We just so. take your managers. Yeah, take your, exactly. Take your potential targets. <laughs> That's you know, it. Take, take your best players as well. We'll come to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll get there. Number seven on the list. Dimitar Berbatov. Yeah. What's the stats on him? What Give us the logistics. Okay, well, we bought him from Bayer Leverkusen on the 1st of July 2006 for 10.9 million. What still, a steal. Still, absolute steal. Still robbery, daylight, amazing. Yeah, I mean, he was banging him in for us for a while. His, his technique, I really don't want to make the comparison to this player because he played for Woolwich, but it was Burkham esque. Mm, yeah. It was amazing. It, I know, I, guy, don't shoot me. That's the only player I can think he was very that. alike, but he paid for us. Yeah. So he was amazing. Obviously, the way he left was wasn't great, but he it had that amazing great. partnership with Robbie Keane. Yeah. Won the League Cup with us in yeah. 08. Yeah. Scored all kinds of goals. Yeah. Played football at his own tempo. Really yeah, we, dictated well, I, I the game. Need, us Spurs fans, we need to be honest with ourselves as well and say he was amazing. He was. His technique. Some of the things he did. Oh. Just bring the ball out of the sky. Someone could drop it. Yeah. From like a hot air balloon. And, and just, people said he was lazy, and he did have that kind of lazy look about him. But but he worked hard the most. But there was one game against Bolton. I always remember. Yeah. And he was tracking back. He was oh, making yeah. tackles. He scored yeah. one as well. I think. He, and he was the original headband wearer. Yes. The original yeah. headband wearer. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Not sure how relevant that was. Not very relevant. But, but I just want to give him his, his props, you give know? Give him his juice. Yeah, yeah. we've yeah. got to give him their props sometimes. <laughs> Dimitri Hobb Berbatov at number seven. Number six, Raphael van der Vaart. Now, this guy was just exquisite. I yeah. think that's the best word to describe him. We're going from Real Madrid. Yeah. I was, I was shocked yeah. that Real Madrid actually gave us something for once. Eight, well, exactly, I know. And a, and a steal. Eight million pounds we, we spent on Van der Vaart. Eight First million. of September. So he was a deadline day deal. Yeah. And I remember it. I, I was on holiday at the time. And I remember it coming through the papers and just being like, what? What? Van der Va- We've signed Van der Vaart. Rafa Van der Vaart. I couldn't, it was a personal favourite of mine. One of yeah. these Dutch Dutch master of the ball. Oh, my God. He was I class. I believe it. And he loved the North London derby. Oh, he did. He absolutely loved yeah. them. Couldn't play more than 70 minutes. Yeah, he was a bit of a stocky real yeah. boy. <laughs> but yeah. those was 70 on the minutes were always the him. most glorious 70 minutes that you'd ever seen. He was, he was phenomenal, man. Oh, I, I'm, so I, and the way he left was just so, so weird. Cool. We always talk about this, but it was just so weird the way he yeah. left. It just came out of nowhere. When he, he did that interview as well, saying that he didn't want to go. Yep. He, he, still, he still loves Spurs, still wishes he was at Spurs. His ex-missus made him, basically. Yeah. Just broke it up. No, and and that, if he stayed, he would, he would have been higher up this list. Yeah. So Van der Vaart, you've done yourself there, mate. All right? You could have made top five, but unfortunately, you're number six. We still love you, Rafa. All right. Number five. Oh, ho, ho. Now it's time for the big guns. Come on in. The Hit guys that have really put it in. Summer signings. Yeah. Robbie Keane. Ooh, yes. Robbie Keane. Ooh. Isn't he like Ireland's top scorer ever? Ever. I think he is. He ever. is, right? Yeah. What, what a legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. Scored all kinds of goals. Still the best celebration for a Spurs man, in my oh, humble opinion. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. I know, like, Bale, this was these People started to like that a bit, yeah. you know, but then everyone just started copying it. But Robbie Keane's had so many different elements. Yeah. I mean, the cartwheel, into the roly-poly, yeah. with the gun fingers. That, that right there, okay, yeah. took a lot of thought. All right, I don't think people put thoughts in tele celebrations anymore. No, it, was, it was like three celebrations in one. Exactly, you're getting a hat trick of celebrations. He made a forward one. roll look good. It was amazing. Yeah, it I was. mean, I mean, if I did it, it would look childish. But yeah. the way he did it, it just had that mm. suaveness to it. If I did it, I'd fail. Pro- yeah. I probably wouldn't be able to get back up my back or something. Oh, just go. Yeah, don't worry, mate. I'm getting old. Nah, you're not that old. <laughs> How much did we get him for? <laughs> Seven million pounds from Leeds. Mm. Now again, another deadline day signing. It's not like Spurs at all, is it? Deadline no, day signing. No, I don't Seven think million pounds. Like Spurs. The first of September on uh, 2002. Back in wow. 2002. How old was I in 2012? I believe 2002. I was. 2002. I was five years old. Five years old. I believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> you were. Yeah, really? plus eight. Oh my God. 13. <laughs> Don't try and work out how old I am. Just no. No, I was 19. Like I said, I was 13 in 2002. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, I remember him coming. I didn't know much about him. I'm not going to lie. He was at Leeds. But I mean, what a signing. Oh, come what on, a signing. Great player. Yes. I mean, like, 
how many times did he ever score over 20 goals for us in a season? Possibly not. But Robbie Keane, for me, the thing that he was an unsung hero in many ways because of his movement. He, his he, movement. The was way incredible. he used to bring other players into the game and he used to make space. Like he didn't play with the foe enough, but when he did play mm. with, the, with other strikers, his movement where he would just draw defenders out and other yeah. players would come in. And he used to bang in about 15 goals a season for us, and they yeah. were always Consistent. important goals, good goals. He scored some great goals. Yeah. Plus, he was Spurs through and through. I mean, he loved that club. He really loved that club. Forget and the we Liverpool really loved move. Him. Let's gloss over that. And when he came back, yeah, we did. We loved him. Yeah. We loved him. Robbie Keane, number five. All right, number four. Now, this one breaks my heart, okay? Because he's gorgeous. He's tall. He's handsome. Right. Hugo Peter Lloris. Crack. Oh, Hugo. Right. Peter Crack. What the? Yeah, that's no, anyway. right. I never said that. Hugo Lloris is in at number four. Now, I wanted him to be higher up this list. But, I mean, I have to say, the people ahead of him are pretty special. And to be fair... He's a goalkeeper. <laughs> I don't want to downplay the goalkeeper. Sorry, Slats. Um, but I, I, I just feel like, let's face facts, they're not as exciting as outfield players. I think that's kind of hindered well, him a bit. True, that is true. But if one, if there is one thing that Hugo does do for goalkeeping is it makes it look quite exciting. He does. Some of those, some of the some saves, the ones where he's like flying incredible. through the air and he punches a hand out. Incredible. Yeah. How much did we get him for? We got him for 11.8 million. On, again, I, I can't believe this. Tottenham doing a deadline day deal, the 1st of September It's almost like we always do it. No, I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. They just put cameras outside our training ground for no reason all the well, time. Exactly, all that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, and so, but the weird thing with Lloris was as well, if you remember, he didn't come into the team straight away. So it was no, under AVB. Yeah. And there was a lot of talk about signing him. There was a lot of interest as well with yeah. other clubs. Uh, the scum up the road wanting him and all that stuff. But he came to us. he's French. But then AVB didn't put him in. Friedel was on fire at Friedel the time. was on fire, yeah. And I remember, actually, when Friedel got taken out, a lot of Spurs fans were actually upset about it. They thought yeah. he was hard done by it. But I don't care. And they're not crying now, are you? Because he's a Yank. I'm joking. I love you, Yanks. But he looks like Bruce Willis. I don't like Bruce Willis. <laughs> don't you? Nah. <laughs> Die Hard. The original Die Hard is nah, amazing. Nah, yeah, but I liked it back then. Yeah. But then I stopped like, I don't know how relevant this is. Anyway, Brad Friedel had to get taken out of the team. Let's face it, look at Hugo Lloris. He was the captain of France. The captain of France should not be on the bench under any circumstances. No, but it was the right... Plus no, he made but... sweeper keepers cool. He oh, made them big cool. Time. Before big that, time. keepers would just sit there like... Oh. Yeah. yeah. And every time we'd say, Friedel, give us a wave, or Gomez, give us a wave, they'd turn around and wave. Mm. Focus on the game. Lloris, give us a wave. It's just like... He's French. He's going to do that. He's just focused, Flick tunnel man. vision, yeah, right? And he's class, come on, he is class. Oh, he is class, and he's gorgeous. Did I yeah. mention he was gorgeous? He I think he's gorgeous. Mm. All right, in at number three, Jurgen Klinsmann. Oh, it's come right. on. It's only right. In the purple kit, I always remember in the, in the purple kit. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, with the, with the, was it like, what was that hair called? It was like a mullet. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. What was that? Was it? Uh, well, you wouldn't remember, you were about five, so. I yeah. just, I think he had the mullet, if my, Memory he sort of had correctly. longish hair, yeah, he did. But um, and the, the, the again, another one with a great celebration. Came yeah. over with a reputation for being a diver. Yeah. And to get on to your point about not having enough winners in our team, had already won the World Cup when he signed him. He signed him in 1994 <laughs> West Germany. from Monaco, and uh, we signed him for an undisclosed amount of money because again, it's not on the card. I think it was about four million pounds. Who was the German at that time, Lord Sugar? Yes. He was 2.8 million. million. Look at you, Lord Sugar, being a flipping... 2.8 million. But he was at least worth 4 million at the time, is what I was saying. That was the point that I was trying oh, to make. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand completely. 2.8 M's. Back then, that was like the equivalent of like, I don't know, maybe 30 today. Exactly. You know, it was expensive at the time. Big money signing. Big money signing. Big money signing. Look, look, again, Spurs were kind of in one of those funny periods. We yep. were in the doldrums a little bit. We'd come out of the Lineker and the Gazer era, and we needed somebody else needed to kind of hero. Pin our we, did, we needed, we a, needed hero. a hero. And then along comes Jurgen, the German, and oh my days, did he transform? He just the, the way just banging. the way you felt about the club was different again. I mean, I was five, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely know. sure how much I felt about yeah. it. But when I go back and watch the DVDs, boy, I get that feeling. <laughs> really pumps through my veins. I, I felt big you things. What. I felt big things. You lot could go on German. YouTube and relive that moment as well. Yeah. Right, in at number two. David Ginola. Another one. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Some, I mean, of these, some of these glory, glory. I mean, like when you when they you weren't there for long. These players. No, uh, they were. Well, they, no, not they really. Had a quick not impact, and yeah. then. Do you know what I mean? And then kind of just ran off. The class, though. The, the, all silky players. Oh. I mean, come on, David. I mean, oh. I think the season, we finished 11th when we had David Ginola or some, yeah. something like that. I can't remember when we had a Hewlett-Packard kit. Yeah. He won player of the season. Yeah. How is 
that possible? PFA Player of the Year, yeah. How do you win PFA Player of the Year? That goal against but finished like eleventh. The goal in the cup, though, was it? Was it against Barnsley? Barnsley. Barnsley. Oh my God! It was like watching Ricky Villa again. I don't remember it. You don't remember? Rem- no. So I was like, come on! I was like <laughs> oh my seven God. or something. I was probably watching wrestling. You need to go back and watch this. I will. Because it was amazing. I will. He but I do amazing. remember Shannon, David Jinn a lot. Yeah. I watched him a lot. My dad absolutely loved the man. Had yeah. gorgeous hair. Yeah, he did. He actually went on to do L'Oreal adverts. Yeah, another good looking man. I mean, mm. those, we, we don't just buy the French players. We buy good looking French players. <sighs> You're worth it. Oh, um, You're absolutely he worth was, it. And he, no, he was worth it. Let's talk about this. He really was worth it. Again, gave the club another huge lift. He was another Sp- a Spurs. He, was a, he is a Spurs player through and through. Yeah. Forget Screw Newcastle. his Newcastle. Day. Yeah, Forget we don't that. care about that. Screw yeah. these colours. Yeah. This is Juventus, by the way. All right. But anyway, at number two, David Ginner. So number one on the list, it can only be one man. Jermaine. Oh, no, wait, we didn't get him in. in no, it wasn't summer. in the no, summer. No, it wasn't in the summer. Gareth Bale. Bale. It had to be. You knew it was coming. Yeah. And if you didn't know, then you do your research. Sorry, mate. Southampton. I mean, it's another player we took from them. What can we say? But what? We've what? robbed that club <laughs> blind. Oh, we have, yeah, yeah. Literally. We've got one young and this year. I don't know. Like, you just. I think they hit our guts. Feeder club. They're just a feeder club. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just hearing as well from the office upstairs that apparently we signed him for five million with add-ons. However, Southampton were going through financial difficulties and we paid off the add-ons for the, the, the massive fee of 1.5 wow! million pounds. That is business, Levy. And I think that confirms that you're a feeder club, Southampton. All right? 6.5 million pounds for bail. I mean, I'm. I, I, I actually feel. I feel. I feel bad. I feel, I'm sorry, Southampton. I am sorry. And then we sold him for the measly sum of eighty-six million. And was it just that much? Was it only? Was that eight point no eighty-six? 86 That's what I right. call it. Yeah. Oh, and they would have had a sell-on clause as well. Ooh. But we bought that off them for the 1.5 million. Oh, oh dear. It hurts. Oh, it, it does. Hurts. It does. Oh, you can yeah. get your business right. Life is tough Oh, sometimes. wow. You can't always yeah. be a Spurs Daniel Levy person, <laughs> can you? No, you can't. Gareth Bale, though. I mean, come what on. a player. Oh, what a player. God. When we signed him, I didn't know much about the kid. I'm, I'll be honest. I, yeah. I just saw him come through. had a bushy hair, big ears. Looked like a car coming down the hill with both doors <laughs> open. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. And then all of a and sudden... And he had that record. He had that record where he couldn't be on a winning side. He like, was a curse. Every game he played him, we lost. He was a curse. Rednap was going to Rednap was gonna ship him he off at one point. Off to go. Where was he going to go? Like Blackburn or somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere. Birmingham or yeah. somewhere. I think it was Birmingham City. Yeah, and then something happened. And so a few things transpired and we, we stuck him in the team and Redknapp decided to put him in at left midfield. And, and it just completely transformed oh his life. My and my God. life. And he scored some of the greatest goals I have ever seen. Ever seen. I've never seen a player single-handedly pick a team up like that. Take you to the Champions League. Destroy a man's destroy career like Destroy a Mike man's on. career like Mike on. The, ne- the following season after Mate. that, when we weren't in the Champions League, but he just ripped teams apart. Wild. He just won games for us. He I will just... never forget that goal at West Ham. Oh, my. God. Upton Park scored it Unbelievable. last minute. Got, he got fouled on the floor, yeah. looked at the ref, got up, said, give me the ball, stuck it, flipping up at echelon, yeah. ran off and hugged AVB. What a moment. Oh, But he was looking around moment. the team. He constantly looked around the team that season after he scored all those amazing goals to win games right at the death. And he yeah. was just like, you know, it, it is just me. It is Gabriel Bale. from like 30 yards oh out each God. and every time. Yeah. There it is, number one, Gareth Bale. Let us know in the comments below what you think of our top 10 summer signings. Do you agree? I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you're going to criticise me. I'm sure you're going to say, Craig needs to come off the channel. Let me know in the comments below if you're new to <laughs> the channel. Make sure you get the Craig right. Craig Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, just it. say Mitch. Just say yeah, Mitch. Just be, yeah. Craig Bryant hasn't done anything. No. He's a nice guy. I mean, I'm come I'm at me, okay? <laughs> Do whatever it takes to make your pathetic <laughs> existence feel better. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop it a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And guys, somehow, somehow, after me saying that, keep it casual. Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Tottenham Transfer News with me, Jack Bryden. We've got a lot to get through today, so let's crack on. First up today, the Evening Standard are saying that we are ready to make a £10 million offer for Braga attacking midfielder Rafa Silva.